Wisconsin I is in Milwaukee at the State Democratic Party Convention. We're interviewing State Senator Nakia harris Dodd. Nakia, thanks so much for stopping by with your <laughs> baby, who's great. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad to be here today. Let's talk about a few things, but let's yes. start with yesterday's announcement on yes. the Bucks Arena package. Well, let's walk it back. In February, the governor proposed $220 million in state aid driven by the jock tax. Right. You, you quickly issued a press release. You like that plan, right? I love the plan. I thought it was a smart uh, plan that was really common sense on making sure that we had a major team in Milwaukee home base so that we can continue to build upon our economy and so it, it really was you know an excitement and to understand that you know we can do more job creation with the new development of the building and with hopes that you know this project would take the same um, approach as was taken on the Marquette interchange when they had all of the great partners together and really intertwine the minority um, businesses <laughs> where they really felt like they were finally connected to projects where their 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 skill was you know um, valuable and provided the resources that the state needed at that time so I was really hopeful that that was something that would come out of this particular project well we're now four months later after the governor presented his budget and you were in the conference room in the in the Capitol yesterday when the governor and county executive a uh, Abley and Mayor Barrett rolled out the latest plan are you as excited about that plan as the first one? How do you feel about it, ma'am? Well, um, am I excited that they, I'm excited that they were able to come up with a plan. Finally, the public is hearing something that they had decided upon after all those months of, you know, um, figuring it out, having meetings, and, and no Democrats were even a part of that conversation. I mean, I think it was very clear that we didn't have a say-so or a dog in this fight. And which concerned me greatly because the Bradley Center is in my district and a lot of that development is going to happen right in my district. Right. And so on yesterday, I really did feel hopeful and optimistic that maybe we can, you know, devise something, a plan that's going to really be a benefit um, to Milwaukeeans, uh, hopefully, you know, revitalize our job market so that people of color can actually be a part of this project. Um, we're talking about folks who need living wage jobs and being able to provide that for those individuals, especially in the surrounding neighborhood. I mean, you have prime, you know, real estate and lots of people that need jobs in that area. So I was really hopeful yesterday and excited just to hear that there was a plan and that I'm, I'm looking to support something that's going to make sense, that's going to not be a burden on poor people and taxpayers. The Bradley Center is in your district. Yes. Does it provide a lot of jobs for uh, your constituents? That and the, the convention center and the entertainment area. It, 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 is yes. it a key economic driver in your district, Senator? I think that it is, and I think that if anyone can go into the Bradley Center on any given event and see lots of people um, who are working at the Bradley Center, and they're mostly people of color. You have all different age groups, so you have a very um, rich uh, neighbor. You know, people that are from our neighborhoods, retirees, individuals who are, you know, getting back into the workforce to make ends meet. You have single mothers who are also trying to put food on their table and have extra money so they can buy, you know, uh, school supplies for their children as well as have their kids participate in extracurricular activities. You know, this is, you know, this is, it, it has provided jobs and sta stabilization for my community. And so I want to maintain that. Well, the slogan that the governor is using is cheaper to keep them uh, because we lose $419 million if the NBA forces, uh, forces the team to leave. Um, does that economics, uh, do those numbers make sense to you, ma'am? Well, I haven't been privy to the numbers, to be quite honest, so I can't say if they make sense or not make sense. It's just kind of like... How did they come up with them? And, you know, because I have not been a part of those meetings, I'm not really sure where they're getting those numbers from, to be quite frank. Okay. But, um, you know, it's, you know, again, it is a, you know, it's, it's, it's something that we have to work out. And so I would, I'm willing to see what it is we can work out without having, again, to be a, have a burden on people who are poor, where there's that debt collection that has really put a wrench in things. Because the reality is, 
they're not going to be able to collect the debt they think they're going to be able to collect and have access to the money they think they're going to have access to because a lot of the money that they're saying they're going to go after right. and there are various ways they said I mean one story says that you know they're going to go after um, folks who uh, are in the court systems which we know a lot fines of fines and forfeitures fines, and foreclosures exactly. and property taxes exactly. and uh, vendor contracts so you don't think that part of the deal you don't think they're going to get the money that that plan assumes ma'am well as far as the debt collection piece goes i mean what the county is reporting out is that a lot of the money that they're talking about they're going to go after in fact is owed in restitution to victims who've been you know it's victims i mean that says it all and then you have other um, individuals who owe child support that money if it's collected it has to go to the family the children of that at that person they collected the debt from but then let's look at it in a larger scope if these folks had the money they probably would pay these bills there you know they're they probably pay if they had the money anyway or they would be paying child support if they were able to afford to pay child support so I'm not sure if they're going to be, be able to even get we just recoup that that type of money that they think they're going to recoup so it really you know it, it's put um, it, it's put a bad taste by a bad spin on the project but again I'm really trying to be optimistic and hopeful that we're not voting on it today there is some time before you know we you know before a decision is actually fully made um, right now it has it still has to you know there's a debate about joint finance it's yes. gonna stay in a budget or are you gonna pull it out well that's my next question yeah. um, you'd like to get to a yes vote on on the plan announced yesterday but do you see it as something should it to joint finance add it to the budget should it be offered as a floor amendment to the budget or should it travel as a separate bill how do you get to yes from a procedural <laughs> standpoint, Senator? That's a good question. Um, I don't think I really have the answer. I can even really tell you what's the best approach, to be quite honest, because I'm not sure what the best approach is to get to a yes, other than figuring out, you know, where is that other pot of the money going to come from? Because right now there is a glitch in the program, <laughs> in the funding. Um, and then, is there a promise uh, or some type of, uh, I guess, commitment to pr providing living wage jobs yes. and making sure that there's minority participation on these projects? There hasn't been much conversation about that. Um, I wrote a letter to the Bucks uh, maybe a month or so ago asking them to please make sure that there is minority participation and then, you know, make sure that they look at what has happened on the Mar uh, Marquette Interchange project and see if they, you know, and, and, and fight to have that type of, uh, you know, participation up, uh, as a part of the project. Yes. What I need to do um, is make sure I'm, I'm also relaying that to my colleagues on the other side. And I think that, you know, that's something that needs to be also taken um, into consideration. Have you gotten any assurances that there'll be prevailing wages or minority contractors on the new Bucks Arena, ma'am? I have not heard anything about You have events. not. Are those potential deal breakers for you, ma'am? It could be. Okay. I think that, you know, if they're not coming up with a plan that will allow for the minority participation, that there is, you know, livable wage jobs and that, you know, they're and, and hiring from that community, um, yes, that could be a, a deal breaker. Let's ask the what if question. What if the Bucks leave? Would that devastate your uh, Senate district? Uh, does, maybe devastates overstates it, but the impact if the Bucks did go in 2017? You know, I, I feel like there will be an impact to our economy personally because, again, um, like I mentioned before, if you walk into the Bradley Center on any given event, you're going to see people that live in my community, in my neighborhood, and they're going to be intergenerational. Those individuals will no longer have jobs. Where are they going to find jobs? We've already, we already know that there's been, uh, you know, an uphill battle for, you know, minorities to get jobs anyway, especially family sustaining jobs. Now we're going to put more people on the street without, you know, having uh, some type of income, mm -hmm. um, and not just some type of income, but an income they can actually live on. Uh, it, by, you know, when they're supplementing their, their, you know, their retirement or supplementing another job, that money, you know, is very important to um, the people that work there. You know, this issue to me is really is bigger and broader. I'm at the point where, you know, I'm concerned that we have so many 
you know, African Americans leaving this state who are educated here, who are born and raised here, but have no there aren't jobs for them either. So we we need to really think about how do we maintain that talent as well as make sure that there are also jobs for other members in our community as well. Because everybody needs a job right now. And if you have talent leaving and then you have folks that aren't, you know, that can't leave because right. they can't afford to leave, right. what kind of economy are we setting up in Milwaukee? At your next Senate Democratic Caucus, now that there is a plan that's on paper, are you going to be able to tell Senator Ringhand, Senator Schilling, Senator Beinhout, Senator Bewley that they should vote for this Bucks Arena funding plan, ma'am? You know, again, I have to still look at and have more conversations with my colleagues on the other side to explain what matters to my community and to my district and what's important and how this project can be a more viable project and plan that will um, that will benefit everyone and not go after poor people. So the, I also need some assurities, even though I am very optimistic and hopeful and want something um, positive to happen in my community. Okay. Final question on a different subject. What's been the impact emotionally on some of these police violence incidents? Milwaukee, Madison, New York, Baltimore. What What's your reading of the of of, of uh, African Americans in Milwaukee? What impact? Well, you know, they're tired. Um, they are tired of burying their daughters and their sons. They are concerned that there is not a plan to protect them in their own homes and their in their own communities. And we have to do something to protect individuals so that we, they can feel safe again, um, to be able to just walk down the street. I've had so many conversations. In fact, in fact um, I, along with some community members, hosted the Unite Milwaukee Summit that will, that I hope to, and, and have seen, neighbors be inspired and re-engaged to take back their neighborhoods and their communities. Even young people are doing it, where they are saying enough is enough. You know, we it's, it's only a small percentage of individuals who are creating this problem. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're the ones that need to step up and, you know, and, and show show our you know so our community that we care and that we want to be here for the long haul and we don't want this violence to continue so people are tired and they're starting to stand up and there are such wonderful movements that are happening throughout the neighborhoods and communities where where people are going into their own neighborhoods and talking to neighbors and trying to find that commonality where they can you know be safe and respect each other and um, and, and, and you know I don't want to say have that kumbaya moment but that something has to happen because right now now, kids are dying, so we have to, you know, do something. And myself and uh, Representative Johnson are working on uh, what I think is smart, strong legislation that will address this violence. Senator, thanks very much. I'll let you, you get back to your convention <laughs> and your eight-month-old son. Thank My you for baby. taking the time. Thank you. I, I'm glad I know people at the convention. Yes, I'm like, he's so, like moving around. Yeah, but thank I know you very much. Well. Thank you. I appreciate it.